Welcome back to Cellular Wisdom, the podcast where we dissect health myths with a scalpel and a smile. I'm Ethan, your resident observer of the human condition. And I'm Alara, here to provide the sharp tongue that Ethan so desperately needs. Today's topic is all about what our barnyard buddies are chowing down on and how it might be, well, messing with them, and maybe even us. Intriguing. So, are we talking about a particularly juicy gossip session amongst the cows? Not quite, Ethan. We're diving into the world of livestock feed and the not-so-secret ingredient that might be causing some cellular chaos. Cellular chaos? Sounds serious. What's the culprit? Buckle up, because it's a mouthful. Polyunsaturated fatty acids, or PUFAs for short. Apparently, our modern livestock is getting a hefty dose of them in their feed. Now, PUFAs. Aren't those the good fats we're supposed to be eating? In moderation, yes. But the issue here is the sheer quantity and the source. These PUFAs are coming from things like corn, soybeans, and even a delightful byproduct called... Don't tell me, some kind of fermented... Bingo! Distiller's grains. Basically the leftovers from ethanol production. Not exactly a gourmet meal for a cow, would you say? Sounds like something you'd find at the bottom of a particularly bad frat party keg. But how does this affect the animals? Well, for one, their body fat composition starts to mirror what they eat. So all those PUFAs translate to higher levels in their meat. So are we talking about a marbling extravaganza? Sounds like a win for steak lovers. Hold on there, carnivore. The problem is that these PUFAs are fragile and prone to oxidation, which creates nasty byproducts that can wreak havoc on the animal's health. Nasty byproducts? Like what existential angst in the chicken coop? More like gut problems, oxidative stress, even damage to the brain. Not exactly a recipe for a happy cow. Okay, that's concerning. But what about us humans? Are we at risk from these PUFA-laden animals? The research is ongoing, but the parallels are hard to ignore. After all, you are what your food eats, right? So, what's the takeaway for the health-conscious consumer? If you can find low PUFA meat, especially from ruminant animals like beef or lamb, that might be a better choice. But ultimately, this whole situation highlights the importance of quality over quantity in our food system. A sentiment I can definitely get behind. Maybe next time, we can dissect the myth of the miracle weight loss berry touted by some influencer with questionable credentials. Now that sounds like a juicy topic for cellular dissection. Until then, Stay curious and keep questioning those health claims, folks. So, let's delve deeper into this PUFA situation. You mentioned these byproducts of oxidation. What exactly are we talking about chemically? We're talking about things like melondialdehyde, or MDA, and other similar compounds. These are created when the PUFAs react with oxygen, especially when exposed to heat or light. Think of it like how oil goes rancid if you leave it out too long. Right, that unpleasant smell. So these oxidized fats are already present in the feed before the animals even eat it? Exactly. The processing of the feed, especially things like drying the distiller's grains, can accelerate this oxidation process. And then, once the animal consumes it, further oxidation can occur during digestion. It's a double whammy. So what are the specific effects on the livestock? You mentioned gut problems. Yes. Studies have shown that high PUFA diets can disrupt the delicate balance of bacteria in the gut, leading to dysbiosis. This can impair nutrient absorption and even cause inflammation and damage to the intestinal lining. In chickens, for example, it has been linked to an overgrowth of harmful bacteria. That sounds rather unpleasant, like a permanent case of indigestion for the poor chickens. Precisely. And in hogs, similar issues have been observed with reduced nutrient absorption, and increased markers of oxidative stress in their gut tissue. It's like their digestive system is constantly under attack. And this oxidative stress you keep mentioning, what does that mean in practical terms? It's essentially an imbalance between free radicals, which are unstable molecules that can damage cells, and the body's ability to neutralize them with antioxidants. When there are too many free radicals, it leads to this oxidative stress, which can contribute to a wide range of health problems. So, it's like the body's own internal fire going out of control? A good analogy. And this fire, so to speak, can damage not just the gut, 
but other tissues and organs as well. Studies have shown that high PUFA diets can impair the animal's natural antioxidant defenses, making them even more vulnerable to this oxidative damage. So, their bodies are less able to fight off these harmful byproducts? Precisely. It's a vicious cycle. The high PUFA intake leads to increased oxidation, which then weakens the body's ability to combat that oxidation. You also mentioned brain damage. That's particularly concerning. Yes, and this is where the research gets even more disturbing. Studies have shown that high PUFA diets, especially those high in linoleic acid, can significantly increase the PUFA content in the animal's brain tissue, and these fats in the brain are even more susceptible to oxidation. Because the brain is so rich in fat anyway? Exactly. And when these brain fats oxidize, it can lead to neurological damage. Studies in chickens have shown that maternal diets high in oxidized linoleic acid can cause severe neurological problems in their offspring, including ataxia, which is a loss of coordination, and encephalomalacia, which is a softening of brain tissue. That's truly alarming. It's like the feed is predisposing these animals to neurological problems from the start. Unfortunately, that's the implication. And it's not just the brain. Systemic oxidative damage has been observed throughout the animal's body, affecting various organs and tissues. So, what's being done to mitigate these effects? Well, the industry often adds high levels of antioxidants, like vitamin E, to the feed. This is meant to help protect the puffas from oxidation. So, problem solved then? Not quite. While these antioxidants can help to some extent, they can be depleted during digestion, allowing further oxidation to occur. It's like putting a small bandage on a much larger wound. And what about the economic side of all this? You mentioned these feeds are cheap. That's a key factor. Corn and soy are heavily subsidized crops, making them very affordable for livestock producers. And distillers' grains are a byproduct of another industry, so they're essentially a cheap way to add protein and fat to the feed. So, it's a system built on cheap inputs, even if those inputs have hidden costs. Exactly. The focus is on maximizing production and minimizing costs, often at the expense of animal health and potentially human health as well. It seems like a classic case of prioritizing short-term profits over long-term consequences. Unfortunately, that's often the case in industrial agriculture. But it's important to remember that these consequences don't just affect the animals. They affect the quality of the meat we consume, and potentially our own health as well. So, what are some practical steps people can take? You mentioned ruminant animals. Yes. Animals like cows and sheep have a different digestive system that naturally results in lower PUFA levels in their meat. So choosing beef or lamb over chicken or pork can be one way to reduce your PUFA intake. And what about the broader picture? What needs to change in the food system? That's a much larger question, but it starts with recognizing the true cost of cheap food. We need to move away from this reliance on monoculture crops and industrial farming practices that prioritize quantity over quality. It sounds like we need a fundamental shift in how we think about food production. Precisely. We need to prioritize animal welfare, environmental sustainability, and human health, rather than simply focusing on maximizing profits. It's a complex issue with no easy solutions, but it's a conversation we need to be having. Absolutely. This whole discussion has certainly given me a lot to think about the next time I'm at the grocery store. As it should. It's about being an informed consumer and understanding the interconnectedness of our food system. What we feed our animals ultimately impacts us. It's a bit like that old saying, garbage in, garbage out, but applied to the entire food chain. Exactly. And in this case, the garbage isn't necessarily literal trash, but rather an imbalance of nutrients and the resulting oxidative stress. It's a more subtle form of contamination, but no less significant. So, if someone is looking to minimize their PUFO intake, besides choosing ruminant meats, what other advice would you offer? Paying attention to cooking methods is important. High heat cooking, especially with oils high in PUFAs, can further accelerate oxidation. So, opting for lower temperature cooking methods like slow cooking or braising can be beneficial. That makes sense. You're not adding more heat to an already potentially oxidized product. Precisely. 
And considering the source of your fats is also crucial. Choosing fats like butter, coconut oil, which are naturally lower in PUFAs, can be a better option for cooking. So, it's not just about what the animals are eating, but also how we're preparing their meat and the other fats we're consuming alongside it. Exactly. It's a holistic approach. We need to consider the entire context of our diet. And it's not about demonizing all PUFAs. Some are essential in small amounts. The problem lies in the excessive intake and the oxidized state of these fats in much of our modern food supply. It seems like the industrialization of agriculture, while aiming to produce cheap and abundant food, has inadvertently created a new set of health challenges. That's a fair assessment. The focus on maximizing yields and minimizing costs has led to a simplification of our food system, which has had unintended consequences. The reliance on monoculture crops like corn and soy, the use of byproducts like distiller's grains, and the emphasis on efficiency have all contributed to this situation. It's a complex web of interconnected factors. It makes you wonder if we've traded long-term health for short-term convenience and affordability. That's the crucial question. And it's a question we, as consumers, need to be asking. Are we willing to accept the potential health risks associated with this industrialized food system in exchange for cheaper food? It's a difficult question to answer, especially for those who are struggling to make ends meet. Access to affordable food is a basic necessity. Absolutely. And that's why this issue is so complex. It's not simply a matter of individual choices. It requires systemic changes. We need policies that support sustainable agriculture, prioritize animal welfare, and promote access to healthy food for everyone. It sounds like we need a complete overhaul of our food system. Perhaps not a complete overhaul, but certainly some significant adjustments. We need to move towards a more balanced approach that considers the long-term health of both humans and the environment. It's a daunting task, but it's certainly a conversation worth having. And this whole discussion about PUFAs and livestock feed highlights the importance of understanding the complexities of our food system. Precisely. The more we understand about where our food comes from and how it's produced, the better equipped we are to make informed choices. And hopefully, those informed choices will eventually lead to a more sustainable and healthy food system for everyone. So, to recap, the excessive use of high PUFA feeds in livestock, derived from crops like corn and soy and byproducts like distiller's grains, is leading to increased PUFA levels in meat, which can then oxidize and cause a range of health problems in the animals. Exactly. And this raises concerns about the potential impact on human health as well. And the key takeaway for consumers is to prioritize quality over quantity. Choose ruminant meats when possible, be mindful of cooking methods and fat sources, and support sustainable agriculture practices. Precisely. It's about being a conscious consumer and demanding a better food system. It's not just about what's on our plates, but about the entire process that brings that food to our tables. Well, this has been a truly enlightening, if somewhat unsettling, discussion. It definitely gives you a different perspective on that chicken breast or pork chop. Indeed. It's a reminder that even seemingly simple things like animal feed can have far-reaching consequences. It's almost enough to make you consider becoming a vegetarian. Almost. Now let's not get drastic, Ethan. But perhaps a little more mindful about our food choices. Agreed. And on that note, we'll wrap up this episode of Cellular Wisdom. Thank you for joining us as we dissected the hidden costs of cheap feed. And remember, stay curious, keep questioning, and until next time, Keep those cells happy.